Well, I have nothing but good news for you today. And looking at that screen, it looks like my hair looks like like one of those troll dolls. Maybe I'm aging myself. Remember like the hair? Sorry, Jimmy, I, I, you'd pull it, like pretend like he has hair, right? on the pencils. I should look that up. Are they still selling those? But I digress in my apologies for looking like a pencil, but you could be in prison for using electricity. Couldn't have saw this one coming. And I have proof, also proof that we're falling off a cliff financially, our economy. Well, you don't know this yet because you've put it all on the credit card. Again, we've maxed them out. We're still breaking all time records, but people are like, oh, it's no word, it's a good economy. And I will show you based on numbers that we are in a complete cliff dive, if, if you've ever tried it, off of, I don't know, a 5,000 story building, which I'm sure on the way down, you're like, this feels great. I don't even need air conditioning. It's a, it's a, it's a, a nice breeze. So which one is first? You guys wanna take a look at Goldman's Sachs? Well, I got them for you. Here we go, Goldman Sachs prepares for layoffs. No, come on, I just got hired too. As deal making slow or slows, uh, the bank reported in July that its profit, yeah, poof, gone, had fallen because of shakier economic conditions. No, we're great. I mean, even Jimmy here. What are we doing, Jimmy? Bye, bye, bye. What, clearly buy. This is a market. He even said, put this one on the calendar. Uh, Jim Cramer, here's why I still believe we've seen the lows of this tough market. So make sure you guys put that one on your calendar and you wanna know why? This is like the first time I've ever, I guess I, re I read. Uh, he said, uh, not this time, this time it was a route, an oversold route. Once again, the S&P short range oscillator got it right. And I say, since when is Jimmy using oscillators? And let's click on the link, Jim, Jimmy's favorite market indicator and how we incorporate it into our trading decisions. Oh, make sure you sign up for CNBC Club to look at it. But then when you sign up for CNBC Club, you still can't look at it. You have to buy it. Basically, and I could be wrong, it looks just like an RSI. So, I mean, you got that one. We will look at oscillators and all that to the stock market in just a moment. Uh, right now, we're throwing you in jail. European country moles law that would throw people in jail for heating their homes above the limit. And I say, yes, that is good news because we have to do what is right. Switzerland is considering fining and jailing. Oh, but Bravo, they're just considering it. Yes, we just considered maybe two weeks to slow this thing. They're just kind of considering, huh? Uh, maybe throwing you in jail. Ah, they'll never do it. Jailing citizens, wait until it starts getting cold, huh? And the prices? Citizens who heat their homes, which you really, you know, we're kind of just coming out of summer, not so much heating homes right now, uh, past 19 degrees Celsius, 66 degrees Fahrenheit, if the country is forced to what? Further ration natural gas. Well, I have a suggestion for that, but eh. What do I know? My wife says I have no problem creating natural gas. Swiss residents, so you guys over there in Switzerland, uh, who violate proposed state laws concerning gas rationing could face penalties such as fines up to uh, dollars, uh, th over, over $3,000 or you go to jail, but it's only three years. And you know what I think personally, I just take the jail three years. I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll have food. Uh, I, I bet you it'll be warm. Worst case scenario, you got little bunk partners. You can kind of all snuggle up together. And won't that be interesting when the police are going door to door, like, yep, you're, you're coming with me. I, I bet you there'll be some heat. Well, there would be in the United States of America where we have like that second amendment thing and, but you guys can like pitchforks or what, well, I don't know what. I haven't been over there in uh, quite a few years. Swiss, now this is where I, I'm kind of confused. My, my brain, uh, Swiss gets 75% of its power from renewable sources. Well, then what are you worried about? You all already went green, so that's nothing. It's great. I like your pool too. That's. That's a nice infinity edge you got there. That would be nice. Take my surf boat out. Be that's that's some water, boy. That is crystal. 
I would just ruin that thing lickety split. Also, news break, they still do sell those Bratz dolls. <laughs> and uh, no, it's not even the Bratz company. So he, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you to go do that. But if you, Yin, Yin to Lind Kun store sells them. How much, how much you make in there, uh, Lin? Yin? $13,772.68 a month. But Bravo, why would we want to start a business in a recession? Well, I always have. Seems to work for me. It's like, why would I ever want to buy a stocks when they're at an all-time low? Buy a house at an all-time low, right? It just always feels weird. And then you do it, and then it goes up, and you're like, that was probably a good idea. Alarm bells sound as world's second largest appliance company. Think about that just for a second. The world's number two position, largest company that produces appliances, uh, said that uh, demand ha has plunged, which it's going to be a little tough to sell all that inventory that everyone just bought because they thought the market's going to be booming. Well, according to this line, you're going to have uh, some pretty steep price reductions, which I was just actually in Best Buy last weekend. And I was like, dude, there's like nothing on the shelves. I'm like, wait, well, what happened? He's like, we just sold everything. It, it was like free. But yes, people are lowering their prices. Like, like this, only 53% off. That's it. I will have to admit, I am kind of stupid when it comes to like the macro gas and backdoor deals, how Russia and China and all, all of this. For me, I'm just like, can I trade it? So just in case you wanted to trade gas, here's an ETF for you. UNG, which to me, I, this is, has not, this is not completed. This left shoulder head, uh, huh, huh, do you think, you think right shoulder? But I don't know. There is so many different ways to skin thy cat. I'd say you'd be setting up for a swing trade there. Like this was just a magical, right? Bounces right off the 200 day moving average. What was that? What did you guys do on that one? That is one candle close. Uh, you were up about 35% with another beat down. And then you put in a buy and then you close. But now we have another beat down. So you have to wait. In trading, it's just, you gotta wait. Also 65% off link in the description if you would like to learn how to swing trade. And one of you guys is like in the comment section, which I highly respect. And because I read all of your comments and you're like, he's like, talk about Tesla. So here's your 30 seconds. So for me, it's complicated. You do have, okay, you have confirmation on the MACD. You're above the 200 day moving average. Congratulations. Looking sweet on the RSI or Jim Cramer's, whatever it is. I drew a support line and a resistance line. You see how it's curling in that? So it's it's probably gonna make a, a solid break. But for me, not financial advice, if I were to trade this, I, I think it's gonna pump, okay? But not the time to enter. Pump, come, pull back, bounce on the 200, get that swing underneath the Bravo 9 right there. I mean, that. if you weren't looking at your little 200-day uh, moving average, that would have been your buy candle, and you, you just ride it to the bank. Which bank are we referring to when it gets in that little brown area up there, which it still has a... A far way to go up there. So you're, yeah, if you want, go for it. For me, that's why I have a Bravo's daily watch list. I wait for like cleaner setups. Like UNG was perfect. That was like, boop, right there. We're already above the 200. We have a beat down. That's what I want. I want these things like, oh, it's so bad. Not like, I don't know where we're going. What I definitely wouldn't be doing is putting it on the credit card like everyone is doing with the highest rates. That's like... What I was saying, how Bank of America and maybe other banks are like, come on in, buy a house for free. I know it's a million dollars and I know the rate is at 12% right now, but it's okay. You have no closing costs. You don't have to put any money down. We'll just pass the buck off and uh, you'll lose everything and uh, the, the elites will win. Average U.S. credit card, what rate hits highest? on record. When just in case you wanted to know what that record is of credit card interest rates, it's above 18%. Call your wife now and tell her to stop. And this is at a time when consumer credit is soaring. Oh, but Bravo, that's because times are great. No, that's because you're broke and you're like, how do I pay for this energy bill? 
Well, you don't. You just go to jail and let the government pay for it. Consumer credit is soaring in the U.S. So what? Right, Bloomberg? Bloomberg's like, so what? Americans are borrowing at an unprecedented pace. Well, if you have to borrow, that probably means you don't have it. But it's way too soon to suggest it means they are having a tougher time making ends meet. Thank you, Bloomberg. Or should I say Jonathan, who wrote this article over there? What are you saying, Jonathan? Americans have driven up their credit card balances at a record pace this year. And here's Johnny Bravo. Huh? Yeah, you calling me out. Okay. The doomsayers say this clearly shows that what households you are struggling in the face of of the highest rates of inflation since the early 1980s and have no choice but to go into debt to make ends meet. And he says the reality, it's not dire. In fact, consumer finances are near the best ever and ever and ever. Everything is great. And I say, well, we could look at the charts and see like what's really gonna happen. If you look, the blue line is present situation. And it usually ends up meeting the expectations, which, uh, it met, it met, it met, uh, yep, it met, had a, had a couple twins, uh, babies. Uh, look, 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 present situation. We're up here. Uh, you guys are saying, no, we're down here. So uh, the, the truth will come out soon. Actually, your expectations, remember that last recession that I guess we weren't in and the recession we're currently not in now, uh, we're, we're below that. But let me do some charting for you. Um, these won't be expectations. Here, here, it's gonna... It's gonna do something like that. That will be the, the the current situation, and then it will meet that that orange line. We just haven't d done that yet. And I say, what is the worst that could possibly happen? Ah, who knows, right? Who knows? Uh, how about us hitting uh, thirty-one trillion dollars in debt, and and it's it's still it's still counting. It's it's still going in that direction. And guess what? Uh, you uh, get to pay this all all these. Fun things back, okay? This, see, national debt, 30, uh, actually 31 trillion. Um, I know it's a milestone, it's great. We just, we keep breaking more and more records, but you have to pay that back in your taxes and we have to supply dollars for the whole world. Well, guess what? It's never gonna stop. It's only gonna get worse. Well, that is until we go back to a standard. Oh, right here, see? See this uh, 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 collects, uh, you know, who, who's going to be collecting tax revenue. That's why they, did, they just doubled the size of those agents. Huh? And, and they have guns and, and they're going to collect it. That is until we have a standard, like a gold standard, a silver standard. You know, something that there's limited supply of. And it's not just debt created out of thin air that has to be paid back with interest or paid back with your taxes, which currently you have to only pay back, uh, only good news here, uh, $245,000 on top of what you already owe. Well, that's if you're a taxpayer. And also just to let you know, we've actually taken a breather here <laughs> for a minute until the next thing happens, the next thing, and that 31 trillion is going to go up. And so will the, the debt that you will have to pay back in your taxes. I know, isn't that neat? And that is why I always say you have to start businesses. You, you can't just, I'm gonna get a job. Because it's not going to be, I'm going to get a job. It's going to, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to get another job. I'm going to get a third job, fourth job. Wife's going to have to work. Kids are going to have to work. It's just a system like musical chairs. It's a debt-based system. They, they just keep removing the chairs and you, you'll have no place to sit. Well, also, that's why I practice what I preach. That's why I taught it in high school, taught it in college, had students that became multi-millionaires. Actually, one of my students had a, a hundred million dollar exit. He did made movement watches in China and sold it to everyone, whatever. Or I, I have students that do license play frames. I'm not gonna show you which one because then you're gonna go, oh, it's so stupid. I, I swear, you'll see it and you're like, people buy that? One of my students is like, I don't know if I wanna go to college. I don't know. And he's and he started doing this and like, yeah, okay, life's solved. So every day when they pull out musical chairs and how much just to let you know, a stupid license play, on each one, 41 grand, 42,000, 41,000, 40, that's a lot of thousands of dollars every single month. And yes, it's gonna cost you, you know, a, a dollar to make it. I mean, probably less, it's, it's silicone. Which I'm from LA, so I'm very familiar with silicone, right gentlemen? 
But I don't care what you're doing. While the chairs are, you, you can be a plumber, you can start a plumbing business, hire people to do plumbing, sell it, to trade it, move it. And my friend was just down, big re multi-millionaire, real estate. But he's like, it's it's really tough right now. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of hard. You can't just push a button. Steven Van Meter really put that one in my head. I'm like, do I really want to have all of it? Is the juice really worth the squeeze owning all these properties when I could just click a button and trade it? Because at the end of the day, I just want to do what I want to do. I don't care if it's if I own a real building or if I'm just like, click, 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 click. Actually, clicking's a whole lot easier, I have to say. And right now, you guys are facing the world's hottest housing market uh, is now on fire because now you will have a painful, what? Reset. Ah, and then you'll be happy, right? After once that's done. And how much done, you ask? Double digit price declines. Okay. And that's why I try to help you guys like limit your exposure. That same thing with like housing market. That's why I offer, again, my three courses, I start them just to the the how to start a business. That's probably what you should do first. But I mean, trading is easier. But anyways, you start a business, you trade, and then you really learn how to trade. So take advantage of that one, 197 bucks. That's crazy. Teaching college, my, my courses were like, what, six, $7,000? And they taught, no, I mean, no, it was stupid. All the stupid college classes that I had to teach that, that I'm like, well, okay, I'll take a paycheck, I guess. I mean, let me give you an example, English. Do, do you speak English? Are you sure you really need three college university classes on, on English when I can clearly hear you speaking fine? Yes, but Professor Bravo, they need to understand what a dangling participle is that will never be used in their entire life. And it's sad because these administration in these colleges, the economics, the people that are so smart that make you take all these classes that really don't help you when you know everything goes really bad. And I just say, how many businesses do you have? Do you know how to trade it? Can you bug out? Do you have a bug out van? If you're in the United States of America, are you in a city? Can you get out of that city? Can, can a helicopter come in and take you out of an area? Actually, they have that when you travel. These are the kind of things that I wanna know about when everything goes bad, but your economists warn energy bill price caps because that's, that's the solution, right? Just kink that garden hose. I'm sure the water won't spew out somewhere else. The, the, it could lead to blackouts in the UK. And I say whether you okay or UK, I'm okay. As long as you do. These principles work worldwide. Same thing. And if it doesn't work, you move. I know my friends in Australia, my friends in UK, my friends in... What is it? Isle of Man. You know, when things don't work out, you can always move. Like, I did not like the high taxes in California, homelessness, and mean people. But if you're a nice person, then I love you. So what do I do? I move. Bravo, I don't have the capability of doing that. Well, then make sure you get the capability to do that. But Bravo, you don't understand. I have so many excuses not to do anything. Oh, I did too. Also, thank you for subscribing. Woo, how about... How about one of these? It, it's free. I think it's free. Is that free? You can check. Click it and see. I don't think they'll charge you. But thanks for hanging out. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow.